Let's talk about the NFL officiating and especially the crew that's coming into Ackershire Stadium to referee the Green Bay Packer Pittsburgh Steelers Week 10 matchup. Let's talk about their tendencies. Let's talk about the amount of flags thrown, where they rank in the NFL. And I think this is an important segment, especially for people betting on these games. I think it's an important segment just as a fan on what to expect. Because the officiating crews have really dictated some of these games, the pace of the game, the outcomes of the game in some instances, in my opinion, across the entire NFL. Welcome back to Mike Drop Sports, everybody. I'm Jason. Pardon me, I got a little bit of a cold brew and the kids brought it home from school. So here I sit with a very stuffy nose, itchy throat. It's just misery. I hope nobody else gets it. It's just been going around. It's crazy. But anyway, let's break down this uh, officiating crew that's coming into Ackershire Stadium and where they rank. They're about 10th in the league on the amount of flags thrown throughout the year so far in the amount of games that they've officiated. They throw about 14 and a half flags a game. This crew is led by Scott Novak as the referee. One thing that I noticed is that they call uh, penalties uh, pretty much evenly against the home and the visiting team maybe slightly more against the home team at times they'll have one or two more against the home team but mostly this this crew is pretty fair and split down the middle in terms of home team visiting team that really doesn't play too much and this crew I'm going to let you guys know they really do let the players play they don't call a ton of penalties that some of these other crews do they don't call a ton of uh, defensive pass interference they don't call a ton of other things like that defense I'm holding uh, those types of things well and one thing else that I really noticed that could really control the game and that I noticed have been some big personal foul penalties and that's for roughing the passer for these players landing on quarterbacks and doing other different things that 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 caused these flags to be thrown. This crew has only called two roughing the passer penalties all season. So I don't think that you guys should really be looking for those types of personal fouls. They do have some face masking uh, penalties, some illegal hands to the face type penalties, but they're very few and far between. They're not really calling those big personal fouls. And that's something that uh, we're not used to, considering it seems like every series there's a personal foul, a rough in the passer penalty. Uh, it, it happens a lot during the game, and those are big penalties that move the chains and move the field position a great deal. This uh, this officiating crew also, they've called a lot of, uh, their, their most flags are offensive holding. They've called 17 of those penalties. So if you're a Pittsburgh Steelers fan, this could really play into your, uh, into your hand here. This could really benefit the Pittsburgh Steelers considering the pass rush that they have with TJ Watt and Alex Highsmith on the edges. Also, that big push they're getting up the middle with the emergence of Cam Hayward back from injury, Larry Ogunjobi, and Keanu Benton. I think that the Steelers could really draw a lot of offensive holding penalties against the Green Bay Packers, especially on the edges against uh, TJ Watt and Alex Highsmith. Zach Tom, he could really be in trouble and get a lot of flags for offensive holding, and they've called 17 this season against the offensive line. Now, it could work the other way against the Steelers also. The Steelers, Broderick Jones, Dan Moore Jr., they could get a lot of uh, offensive holding penalties. But I look for it to really benefit the Steelers. I look for those flags to really help the Steelers, especially on defense. Also, they've only called seven pass interference defensive penalties all year long on the defense. So that's not that much. Considering each week we see a lot of pass interference calls down the field that keep drives alive, that keep things moving. And I think if you're the Pittsburgh Steelers and you have people like Joey Porter Jr. who's going to play an aggressive style of football, I think that that could really benefit the Steelers also on defense by not getting those big pass interference calls. And it possibly could stop some of the drives for the Green Bay Packers especially. And it could benefit the Steelers on offense. And when you have players like Deontay Johnson, George Pickens, who are guys that can get open and cause a lot of contact. Guys that are going to draw those big hands coming out and trying to woe them up a little bit. So the Pittsburgh Steelers could really benefit from that also, considering there's only been seven. So it could benefit the Steelers each way. It really, really could. 
Let's talk about the other penalty that they call the most of, and that's false starts. And even in Thursday night's game, we've seen some false starts not be called. But this officiating crew is called 23 over the season, and I think they really watch that. And they're not going to let those big jumps by those tackles go and not be called. They've called 23 false starts this season. And I think that that might benefit the Pittsburgh Steelers defensively also in a way that Pittsburgh's been getting those tackles jumping because of the excellent pass rush and those tackles are getting a little bit of a jump on the defense or on our defensive ends or correction our outside linebackers and TJ Watt and Alex Highsmith so I think that could even the playing field a little bit because this officiating crew will call those penalties and they won't uh, let that slide and they're gonna make sure that it's an even playing field in my opinion so 23 false start penalties. So this crew in general, let's just say this. The Pittsburgh Steelers defense should have a really, really big day. Just going off of the way this officiating crew calls the games, I think that that really, really benefits the Pittsburgh Steelers defense. And I'm not sure what you guys think, but these tendencies seem to be pretty consistent across the board. Whenever I look at each game that this officiating crew has, has called, it seems as though that it's pretty consistent and that they're pretty even kill with exactly what they call and exactly what they're looking for. Now, the last game they officiated in my uh, or in my research was on 1026, the Buffalo Tampa game. They called 20 flags for 160 yards. They called nine against the home team for 86 yards, and they called 11 against the visitors, and that was for 74 yards. So it's pretty even in terms of yards, penalty amounts, uh, things of that nature. It seems to be uh, they give each team about the same amount of calls. Because you can call holding on every play if you really wanted to. So this referee crew really seems to be conscious about making about the same amount of calls for each team. Defensive holding, offensive holding. Those penalties don't really shine through. Or defensive holding doesn't really shine through. Excuse me. Offensive holding, they do call that a little bit. Like I said, 17. And that's going to benefit the Steelers. But defensive holding, they're not calling a ton of that defensive holding. And again, that could really benefit the Steelers with their aggressive nature being one of the teams that play the most man coverage in the league. And that's a good thing. Now, it could flip-flop, and maybe we won't get the calls against the George Pickens or Deontay Johnson, but one benefit that we have is Deontay Johnson is an excellent route runner, and he gets good separation. And I think this is the type of game that you can utilize Deontay Johnson and let him eat a good bit. I do think George Pickens is going to get his, but I definitely think Deontay Johnson could have a monster game and really take off in this game. Uh, let's talk about, too, they do have 116 total flags thrown for the year, and that's 93 penalties because they've had 23 dismissed penalties, 23 dismissed flags. So 93 total accepted penalties at 743 yards, and that's 47 against the home team, 46 against visiting teams. So, again, that's pretty even. So, in general, guys, let's just sum this up. In general, I really think this officiating crew will play a role in this football game. And I think by looking at it and breaking it down, it could really truly benefit the Pittsburgh Steelers style play. And I think with the officiating crew in place and what matchups there are across the board, I think the Pittsburgh Steelers could really have a dominating performance, especially on defense. I think the way this crew calls the games, I think defense could really, really, really shine, guys. I think this could be one of those monster games. They might put up 14 points by themselves this game. They they, they really have a good chance to do it because they are going to continually harass Jordan Love. And there's going to be big, big issues for him. He cannot be back there holding the football or otherwise he is going to make some major mistakes and take some big time sacks throughout this football game. The one thing that I do worry about is Aaron Jones, but I'm pretty confident that the emergence of Cam Hayward coming back from injury, coupled with the rest of the younger guys in Larry Ogan, Joby, I think that they're going to be able to control that run, and I think that the line, middle linebackers led by Quan Alexander and Alandon Roberts now, I think that they're going to be able to come downhill and really support that run game. So I think the Steelers are really going to benefit on defense, guys. I think this will be a monster game defensively which could only translate to one thing for me, and that is a pretty damn good game on offense. 
I said that it's going to be a 34 to 10 victory, and I'm going to stand by that. After reviewing these referees and seeing where they're making the calls and seeing how it stacks up against your Pittsburgh Steelers, I really do think that this could be one of those games. 34 to 10 Pittsburgh. And I'm going off of a lot of research with this. It's not just a guess. I really think that this could happen. I think the Steelers could be coming close to that 400 yard football game on offense. But I do think this defense could really shine. I think that they could score 7 to 14 points by themselves. I really, really do with the way that this, this referee crew calls the games and what they let go and what they don't let go. It kind of plays into the Pittsburgh Steelers' hands. And you're bringing Jordan Love into a hostile environment in Pittsburgh. And I'm calling out for all fans, get there if you can get there and be loud and crazy and really cause some disruption for this uh, Green Bay Packers offense especially. And really be there to support and get this offense fired up. I think it's a must. I think that we really need to shake up the uh, the Packers offense and make them really, really uncomfortable and limit their communication. And I think that will even more just hinder that offense and not allow them to do the things that they like to do. They do like to push the ball down the field. And I think that could run into a lot of interception problems. You have ball hawks back there like a, K a KZ, like a Patrick Peterson, who is a ball hawk. He will go after the football and he can get interceptions. I think Joey Porter Jr. could come up with a big pick. I, though, really like the pass rush, and I think that that's going to be the real difference maker is T.J. Watt and Alex Highsmith. I think they're going to have one of those games that is just out of this world. I think it's going to be one of those games that we talk about for quite some time and use it as a reference. And I think this will be the real kickoff point for your Pittsburgh Steelers on offense. All right, guys, let's wrap it up. 34-10 uh, to 10 Steelers. My guess, well... My educated guess after doing a lot of research on this game. And uh, I feel that it's going to happen. So put it in the comments what your score predictions are for this Sunday's matchup against the Green Bay Packers. And where you think the Pittsburgh Steelers need to shine in order to gain a win. And what you guys think the keys to victory are. Um, again, guys, we will do some more shows here leading up to the game. Hopefully, maybe we'll get a live going before on Saturday, tomorrow. Maybe we'll do that in the middle of the afternoon or in the evening time. Um, maybe we'll do that. But we will do our live show Sunday after the game following the Steelers Packers at Ackershire Stadium. And what I think will be a big win for your Pittsburgh Steelers. All right, guys, until next time, let me know what you guys think about this referee and officiating content. Let me know if you like it. Let me know if it would be something that you'd be into uh, seeing or hearing again. Until next time, peace.